If an alien spaceship lands on our planet in the doors open, what do you expect to see? Two arms, two legs, two eyes, a back of slime, a swarm. Could alien life have emerged in outer space rather than on a planet? And if we simulate bacteria in a computer, are they alive? The answer to all these questions hinges on understanding just what life is and how it comes about. Evolution seems a complicated and pretty random process, but in a recent paper, a group of scientists surprisingly says that if we could go back 4 billion years and start life on Earth all over again, the result might not be all that different to what it's today. Indeed, life all over the universe must follow similar rules. In their own words, computational, physical and dynamical constructs constraints profoundly limit the design space of possible living systems. One of the consequences, they say, is that we'll never get rid of parasites like viruses because parasites are an inevitable consequence of social media. Excuse me, I mean evolution. They arrive at this rather startling conclusion by looking at what property a system needs to increase complexity. This circumvents the problem of having to start with a definition for life. The most obvious example is that if you want any sort of evolution and natural selection, you need a system that can store information and reproduce it with small modifications. Life on Earth currently does this in the form of DNA, and while while that is a very specific molecule, the researchers say that long chains of molecules are the easiest and therefore most likely way for a system to store information. The second ingredient that life needs, they say, is what was already pointed out by Erving Schrödinger, yes, the one with the cat, about 100 years ago. It's that a living system must avoid entropy increase. If entropy increases, that will eventually merge the system with its environment in a state of maximal disorder. As they write in the paper, each entropy-reducing reaction must be locally coupled to a free energy source, and continuing to do that requires reaction cycles. That's a sort of metabolic system. Next, they say that the metabolic system can work more efficiently if the system shields itself from the environment. That is, it'll develop a physical system boundary. Now take these three together and you have the basic properties of a cell. But that isn't it, because there's an easy way for these basic cells to reach higher complexity. It's to combine several cells and differentiate their tasks. The authors say that multicellular organisms are the most likely path to higher complexity because these groups of cells are particularly stable and their individual cells have proved to be robust already. They say that this gradual build-up works all the way to cognitive function because as the system grows it can find ways to gather energy and reproduce that are not possible for simpler organisms. That, however, doesn't make the simpler organisms organisms go away, and indeed some of them will try to benefit from the larger ones. This is why they say complex life always has parasites. It's an inevitable byproduct of evolution. In summary, they say that it's highly likely that all life in the universe is made of differentiated cells, has metabolic cycles, stores information in long chains of molecules, and sits on the couch while watching YouTube just checking if you're listening. Basically, they say that a bag of slime isn't differentiated enough and a swarm isn't stable enough under environmental perturbations to reach higher complexity. But it's also interesting what this does not imply. It doesn't imply, for example, that life must have started on a planet. Indeed, some have argued that life could exist in gas clouds in interstellar space in the form of simple bacteria. This could work because it's so cold in these clouds that hydrogen is liquid. This means the hydrogen could be contained by cell membranes and the microbes could use it to transport molecules such as carbon monoxide from the gas clouds through the membranes. Another thing that the new study doesn't imply is the particular shape of the cell masses. 
So maybe alien life is made of cells like us, but it's got seven legs instead, or breathes fire, or buys Twitter. That said, I'm highly skeptical that the argument that life must be of this form is correct. This is because it assumes that life emerged by natural evolution. But if you have sufficiently complex life, like humans, these can do their own artificial evolution. For example, AI researchers are currently trying to create a virtual cell. This has practical uses for testing drugs, but also raises the question of whether the virtual cell is alive. And if yes, what is to stop us from creating living beings in artificial physical environments that don't exist in the real world? Then again, maybe this isn't the real world either. Hello? Elon, I told you not to call me at work. Well, you could just have told them you want to go back to your home planet rather than taking over this one. I don't listen to what they say on X. It's all nonsense. Elon? You know how you sometimes need a little nudge to learn something new or try something new to improve your life? There's an app called Imprint that works very well for me. Imprint has a lot of content on personal development, science and technology. So it's exactly what I'm interested in. Like, for example, this course on how to manage stress, especially from social media. I've learned from this about the idea of digital minimalism, which means it's no good to drop social media entirely. You just need to make it work for you. The course has given me some helpful advice for doing that, which finally encouraged me to clean up my feeds. I found this to be really helpful. Imprint has courses, visual book summaries and quick read articles, but I like the courses best. Calling it an app is not a good way to put it. It's a modern learning method, really. It helps you make a habit of discovering new content and collecting useful information. Even if I have only a few minutes a day, I always get something out of it. And yes, of course, I have a special offer. The first 200 of you to subscribe will get a seven-day free trial and 20% off an annual subscription. All you have to do is scan the QR code or use my link imprintapp.com Sabina. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.